Hi, Zodi Art here again. Today I'm going to talk about using fabric paint to customize your costume. You know, you can sometimes buy a great looking costume. This one I got from Amazon and it just isn't the color I wanted, but the shape and the fabric is just fine, but I need to change the color. No problem. I have some acrylic leather paint and some other fabric paint that they're both acrylic so I can water them down and I am going to use them to tint my fabric. So I'm using a plate with a Ziploc on it so I can mix my colors on and I'm actually like using a water te color technique. I'm going to be using a synthetic brush and this is actually a 12, a number 12, so it's a pretty wide brush that I'm using most of the time. I'm wetting down the fabric. This fabric is kind of a, kind of a velveteen, soft um, fabric. It has a little bit of a nap to it, but any time you want to change the color of something fabric, like, like a costume, you can use the same technique. Now, I'm not going to use the paint straight from the tube or from the jar because I don't want to make my costume stiff. So what I'm doing is I'm adding water and then I'm just using the paintbrush and just kind of accenting the little fish scales. So I'm using a combination of blues and greens and some black mainly. The blues, I have a, a solid blue and I have a metallic blue and I'm kind of mixing them together to give the fish scales some kind of flashiness to them. I also have a silver metallic paint that I'm going to be using for the highlights. So right now, is I'm just beginning. So it's going to take a while before I really decide how drastic I want to get with my shading. But as I work with it, I'm wetting an area and then... As you see, I have two different brushes, um, and then I'm just using the blues and blacks and a little bit of green to darken the darker areas and hoping that that'll tint the orange enough to give it kind of a, we want a, a bass look. So we would like to have it in the browns and blues and green categories and right now as you can see it's very much in the orange and reds but that's okay because it's still going to be fun so i'm adding some of the darker colors to the inside of each of the scales as you can see the um and then blending it into the top this will add some more depth and it will tint the orange and reds so that it's not quite as cartoony and orange and reddish looking. So as you can see, I'm using kind of a, a, a more solid color toward the bottom of each, um, each scale and then kind of washing it out, scrubbing it up with water and dipping my brush in to clean it a little bit, but it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly clean. So sometimes I'm using a little bit of metallic and sometimes I'm using just the blue itself um, and blending it away. So besides giving this a different color that it had before, because so I'm gonna be moving this into the cooler spectrum of colors. It's also going to have more depth because I am adding the um, darker colors into the shadows. Of course, I, I have to be careful. I don't want to add too much of the solid. So even though you see that it it is um, actually adding quite a lot of color to those to those creases, um, it's still very, very watery, so I'm really not adding a lot of pigment or a, a lot of body to the paint. It's mainly, it's almost like dyeing the fabric. And I know uh, most of this paint that I have that I showed you is leather paint, but it works fine. It's just a, a, an acrylic fabric paint. So you can use latex paint, you can use acrylic paint. 
Um, you could use oils if you want to, but that would be messier. And then you'd have to use some kind of um, medium to blend the, um, the, the oils out so that it wasn't completely covering your project. And also if you use oils, you know, it smells a lot more and it would be a lot thicker and it, it might actually be stiffer when you were done. So I would tend to stick with the acrylics. So if you have acrylics at home, they could be tube acrylics, they could be jarred acrylics. Um, they're what I like to work mostly with because for one thing you can get smaller um, containers of colors. If you go into latexes, latex, yes, you can get a little jar of latex paint and that is waterproof, but uh, I mean, water-based, not waterproof, but water-based. Um, and yeah, you can buy little pint size, but just still going to have a lot of little pints all over the place trying to mix your colors. And with tube acrylics or the little the little plastic containers that I showed you, it's it, they're just really handy to be able to uh, move around with them and store them, and you can afford to buy you know, a bunch of different colors. The little folk art ones you can get for like $1.50 to $3 a container. The leather paint's a little bit more expensive, um, but it also works really good on leather and it keeps the leather su subtle and um, movable and it sticks. Um, and I have some videos on um, working on some boots that I have painted with leather paint that I will tag at the end of this. But for this, this is obviously not leather. It's kind of this this weird um, kind of soft um, fabric that I don't even know what it's really called, but it's um, it works very nicely to with this fabric paint. So I'm also adding some, uh, right now I'm adding some greens into it. As you can see, it's kind of a watercolor look the way I'm just adding um, into areas. And yeah, that kind of smushed up and it bled into the next one. Don't worry if it's not perfect for what I'm doing. It's just for fun. Um, if the lines aren't perfectly delineated, it's still gonna give the effect of having a bunch of fish scales. So yeah, I'm adding some more water. And right now the, the green that I'm putting in is kind of a Kelly green, um, kind of a bright green that is watered down quite a lot. And that was a black that I added and I'm blending the two together. And I kind of like blending out to the end because um, that's kind of going to be a highlight. Right now I have some white that I'm adding to the green in places. Um, to give it some highlight. And the thing with a project like this is, yeah, you might work in one area until you really feel like what you know what you want to achieve. And then when you're doing the rest of it, you can go a little bit faster because you now know what, what you're doing. So I'm adding some white mixed in with um, the silver metallic that I showed you at the beginning, and I'm highlighting every single little scale. Kind of, they were already highlighted before I started attacking them with other colors. Um, but I'm going over them again because I kind of diminish the values of the highlights when I was putting all my other colors on. So as you see, I'm going over every single one and adding a little bit of highlight. Now with the silver metallic paint, it also is gonna give it a nice little pop, a little pizzazz that the original didn't really have. So that's kind of fun too. And don't worry if you're little highlights aren't all exactly the same. I and mean, this is kind of an organic project that it's okay to have some um, a little different than others. At times I go back, I, I notice that 
um, one scale isn't standing out as much and I might go back with some more of the darker colors to kind of pop those scales a little bit more, give them a little more depth and contrast with the one next to it. I, I like a lot of contrast with my work. So here again, I'm adding some of that silver and white mixture. Now my fish um, is still pretty wet because remember I used a, a big paintbrush and put water on it when I was doing the other colors. So these highlights will blend in. They're not just sitting right on top of the fabric. Um, So they will blend in a little bit. I guess you might call this, this fabric like a really low nap fleece. It's some kind of synthetic. And I'm using the metallic paint instead of like going over the whole thing with a, with a gloss to make the scales look shiny. Because if you put a gloss paint on the fabric, that would really stiffen the fabric up. And this is to be worn because it's a costume. So you, you don't want to have it stiff. It's not that kind of head piece that is stiff like a mask. Um, it's supposed to fit around your head. It's kind of more like a big pillow. Yeah, the highlights, when you put them in the, the darker areas, they really do pop. And no, I'm just showing you some of them. I'm not going to show you every single fish scale because it would be really long. This probably took me, oh, probably around four, four to six hours to complete this whole project. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a quick painting project, but it is fun and... It looked great when it was done. As you can tell, because the blues and greens are on the other side of the color wheel, they do knock down the orange and, and yellows quite nicely. They're very complementary and it is it is looking very nice. So usually when I'm doing a project like this, I will start with the less extreme and then in increase the dramaticness to it. So that's why I'm going back and adding more colors and more shade to the project as I'm going, because I didn't want to do that at the beginning and then decide that it was too, um, too much. It's always easier to add more than to decide you're going to have to scrub it or, or somehow erase what's or cover up what's um, too much. You can see even the fins, I did do some 
coloring on where I added the darker blues and greens toward the body of the fish and then blended it out to the original yellow right at the top of it of this um, screen you can see a fin and I think I ended up adding some more darker blues and greens before I was finished with that but that was the first bunch and you can also see the shininess of the blue of that um, fin and that was that metallic blue paint. So yes, even even the um, the fins that are close to the edge, I wanted to the scales that were close to the edge. I wanted to add some highlights to them too, so that they all work nicely together. I remember there's two sides of the fish, so I had to keep going back and forth between one side and another to make sure that they pretty much went went together. We didn't want you know, one side to be um, more shaded than the other. I wanted them all to, to go together nicely. Now that part you're looking at right now is designed to go around the neck of the person wearing it. Um, that yellow is the the inside liner, which I will tone down in a few minutes. I'm kind of adding highlights and shadows on both sides of this fin so that it blends together nicely. And I sped up the video a little bit right now. I'm adding blue and black into a container and I'm adding a lot of water with it. And I'm spreading this watered down mixture inside to cover up that yellow lining in case the person happens to take this, whoever's wearing this, um, this costume takes the the fish head off. I don't want it to be like bright yellow. So I thought it would blend better if it started out being pretty much the color of the rest of it. So this um, area that you're seeing right now would be encircling the face of the person wearing the costume. So it's kind of like tie-dyeing in a way without the ties in that um, I'm blending the colors. There, It's not a solid look. Even on the inside, it's not solid. As you can see, I put some, some heavier um, blue right there, and then I'm blending it in. Um, it's a watercolor look. As you can see, the inside is almost completely done. I've decided that I wanted to add a little bit more texture. I wanted to put a stripe down the side of the fish. So I just watered it down and then I'm blending this, this darker blue as, as just as a little interest because most bass type fish have stripes on them. So I'm putting a, a stripe down the middle of him. And you could go at this all day. I mean, you could keep going back again and again and again and, and accenting different scales. But at some point, you got to say enough is enough. But right now I am, yes, going back in and accenting the scales a little bit more. One thing that um, is very handy with these wider brushes is that you can dip your paintbrush in 
to the paint on one corner and then the other corner of your paintbrush you can leave with not much paint and just use like water for blending. So you're using pretty much um, one brush for two, two looks. See, I'm using one side of the brush for the darker of the, of the um, paint and then turning the brush over where I have used mainly water and thus I don't have to keep on dipping my brush every second into the, into the paint. So one side will have the color and the other side of the brush is cleaner and it'll just use for blending. And as I said, you go back and forth and add highlights and shadows forever. But at some point you got to say enough is enough. Um, and I was pretty much at that point. But yeah, it's always tempting to find yet another place that needs a little bit more attention. So I've attached at the, um, at the end of this video, I have my Amazon affiliate links and um, where you can buy, well, the original um, mask head for this and also the paints. So you could play with this yourself. Thank you and have fun. Happy Halloween.